Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Hi, food friends. I'm Ralph behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And today, Ralph, this is a Cavalcade and Friends episode. Right. Nice. Okay. Because we have a friend in the kitchen with us. We're making hot fudge sauce. Someone's in the kitchen with Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and the person who's in the kitchen is our, we don't say old friend, we say long time friend. Long time friend. Kurt. Hi, Kurt. Uh, and Hello. thank you. Thank you, Kurt, uh, for being here. And, and Kurt came bearing a recipe, but uh, uh, Kurt often has us over for dinner at his house, and he's quite a good little cook himself. Uh, <laughs> But one day for dessert, he uh, offered us uh, ice cream with this hot fudge sauce on top. That he made. That he made, but not just any hot fudge sauce. It was a recreation of Saunders hot fudge sauce. Saunders Sanders. Tell folks who that is. So is that Colonel you, Sanders? No. If you grew up in Detroit, as all the, we all did... Um, Sanders was, is, I guess, a confectionery company. They used to have stores in about every neighborhood. with and a, soda fountains. And, and soda and with soda fountains, right? And what was your favorite thing to order at Sanders? Um, a cream puff with hot fudge on it. There it is. A cream puff with this hot fudge, by which, the way. Which we did an episode uh, with that years ago. Years ago. And if you guys search Cavalcade Food Channel, just search cream puffs. And the recipe for a Saunders-esque cream puff is there. And you can, it's very easy to make. But um, Saunders would have these cream puffs. They'd put vanilla ice, they'd cut it in half, put vanilla ice cream in the middle, and then cover it with this luscious milk chocolate hot fudge. I often saved my 35 cent lunch money and went up to the Saunders on Jefferson and had a hot fudge sundae, but I asked for chocolate ice cream. Ooh. Wow. The ladies didn't like give you the eye over there? Decadent. I know. Cause, um, well, so double chocolate. So long story short, I said to, we had it and it was delicious. And Sanders was still making the hot fudge uh, up until recently, and for some reason, you can't find it anywhere. Uh, and I don't know why, uh, but it's not available in a lot of the stores that used to carry it all the time. Ralph, we have friends who've been hoarding it. Yeah, buying it by the box load. Yeah, while they can. And so anyways, um, if you're not a Detroiter, this sauce is no less delicious uh, and a, a perfect accompaniment to uh, ice cream and anything you'd put hot fudge on. And if you are a Detroiter and you can't find it, now you'll know how to make it. There you go. You can make your own. Um, so, Kurt has made this recipe successfully. So, I asked him if he would talk me through the process. All right, and I have to admit that I found this recipe. Um, it was printed in the Detroit Free Press at one point. Okay. And um, it seemed like it was well worth saving and trying, and it turned out pretty well. Well, well that's I think I think in Detroit, you know, there's always a hunt for recipes of Sanders stuff, things like uh, we did. Um, Ralph, do you remember H Jail Hudson's Canadian cheese soup and the Maurice salad? Of course. Yeah. And these these classic recipes that we are flavors of our youth growing up at these stores and and companies that that aren't aren't around anymore. And I wanted to mention also that Kurt was so generous. Not only did he give us the dessert with his homemade hot fudge sundae sauce, <laughs> but he also <laughs> gave us each our own little jar of it. I didn't get a jar. <laughs> Ralph took two of them, probably. <laughs> really? No. Didn't I remember? Well, that's all right. We're going to have, we'll have some after today, <laughs> yes. right? Okay. We're gonna, Except for which me. in the past is in the past. <laughs> no, no sense arguing. Okay. Anyway, so um, what we have just in front of us, and the ingredients are fairly straightforward, two sticks of butter. We have a uh, package of 
milk chocolate chips. So not the semi-sweet. You want the milk chocolate. Is that right? That's right. And they said Nestle's. Okay. And I got the Nestle or Nestle, as I like to say. Mm -hmm. and wrong. Wrong. Incorrectly. Um, and then I have... Uh, dippity do. A... <laughs> Uh, it, it would. It certainly would hold your hair in place. This is a cup and three quarters of light corn syrup. Yes. Um, and this is. I here's a sixteen ounce bottle, so it's not quite the whole bottle. There's a quarter cup left here, but you need a cup and three quarters of the light corn syrup, and then a fourteen ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Right? Correct. And there we have that. But so, you also need to explain this very bizarre measuring cup, which I've never seen in my so, life. So, and, and those those who watch this channel regularly has seen me use, this is called a Wonder Cup, and I have used it many times, and I have said, uh, I've got a few of these. i got one at home, i got two or three here for things like corn syrup. Sour cream. Sour cream. Peanut butter. Honey, mayonnaise, Crisco, shortening. Uh, and, and the purpose is what? Well, I'll show you. Just, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, we do the jokes around here. Okay. So, anyways, let's, let's get Not started. Not always effectively. <laughs> Let, let's get started with this. We're going to put in these. Oh, I should explain. Yeah, what is this? Uh, this is This is a, what we call a double boiler. This whole thing is made in the double boilers. That, that's, that's right? That's correct. So you can, uh, some people have double boilers. Uh, do you have one that's actually made as a double boiler? I do. And it's a, it's a pot that sits on top of another pot. And in the bottom vessel, you put water. And in the top vessel is where you have, it's an, a way of indirectly cooking. So the heat is not actually on the food. And things that can scorch easily or burn mm. easily, especially stuff like butter and things that are very sugary, will burn very easily. So they would scald on the bottom of a pot directly on a, an element or a burner. Like chocolate and things so, like that. Yes, and so I have double boilers probably more than I can recollect. But I often like to make my own, and how you do it is just like this. This is a Pyrex bowl. You want something heat proof, glass, and it's just sitting atop a pan of simmering water. And what it's doing is it's melting the butter. Two sticks. Now I know Two why sticks. this uh, hot fudge sauce is so buttery good. And and I you know I always you always remember it's with the Sanders hot fudge how it did have a buttery kind yes. of uh, note to it. So. Now we're going to take the, so there's a pair of scissors right yeah. there. Because we wouldn't allow it to spill the, spill the only package on the floor. Exactly. Yeah. You, can see, you can see how that could have gone badly very easily. All right, so we've got, um, we're putting in our package of milk chocolate chips. And uh, Which, there's a red, um, that yes, spatula. You read my mind, Kurt. Thank you. Okay. And we're just going to kind of stir this around. You, you see, Ralph, that butter is melting, the chips are melting. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. And so, Kurt, what am I doing? Just melting this stuff together here? Yes, you're melting it and when it gets nice and uh, blended. blended. Yes. Then you'll add the next ingredient, which, which is the Eagle brand sweetened condensed milk. Okay. So, we're going to get this. Well, that's actually what I have. I think that's all they had at the store, but we will. Um, so, oh. our our neighborhood, Sanders, was um, on Michigan Avenue, in downtown Dearborn, and there was a couple of them actually, and I know one was at Westbourne Mall, and uh, the other one was right on Michigan Avenue in the business district, and. Yes, we went there often. This looks like a mud pie. Doesn't it? 
Well, it smells good already. I mean, mm. butter and and mil- and, and chocolate. Yeah. So I mean, it's like how can yeah. what's well, not to like? Right, exactly. Now, um, I do. You did put this in in jars, didn't you? I is, did. Is it a way yes. of storing it? Yes. Okay. Just the way Saunders did. Yes, in glass jars. That's how they sold it. Now, I know that Saunders also had a, um, later, they came out with a dark chocolate version. And I su- suppose that if you used, if you just switched out the chocolate chips with a dark chocolate chip, it would probably... It's certainly worth trying that yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, I think it, I would hope, think it would work. Uh, the the amount of cocoa and or cocoa butter might be a little different. I don't know. Okay, so we are almost there with this. Um, just a little bit of butter still melting, but those chips melted easily and pretty thoroughly. Yeah. How many times have you made this recipe, Kurt? Just once. Oh, just that. Oh, well, weren't we special to get some of it? Well, because when you make it, you have to eat it, and there's a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> so you were you were saving yourself from yourself exactly. by giving it away. Okay. I think that looks pretty well. What do you think? Yeah. Are you are you ready for the uh, condensed milk? Yeah, and you know, condensed milk really is just milk where the water has been removed and sugar. Has it's, been added. Yeah, that's been added. I mean, it's very dense and very sweet. It's kind of uncooked caramel almost, mm-hmm. really, you know, if you want to think of it that way. So it's the whole can. The whole can. And nothing but the can. So that would have, it could have had another one of these measuring cups and... It, you, it, yes, although I fe- felt this was already sort of pre-measured. Is there another little spatula there? Uh, uh, there's a white one. Uh, smaller. smaller. Uh, yes. Yes, thank you. Because this stuff is really gooey. So what's it taste like by itself? Well, there will be some left if you want to give it a try. I like I've put, had it. I like putting it in my coffee sometimes. Do you? Yeah, and you use that for Spets Leches. I was going to say, there. I know that with the, the cake, you do use this. But it's uh, kind of creamy. I think the um, the Carol syrup actually has a vanilla flavor too, doesn't it? Mm, I don't. I think the syrup is just sweet. Because this one There's said, no vanilla in it. What? Oh, with real vanilla. Well, there, I'm wrong. Again. Okay, thank you. You know, I've never. It doesn't had... call for vanilla, so you may have ruined the entire recipe. <laughs> well, it calls for light corn syrup, so that's what I'm putting in. This is why I usually cook alone. Okay, but it's okay. Ralph, did you have a favorite at um, Sanders? We didn't have any directly in our neighborhood, but if we went downtown, we would um, we would go to the ones you know in the downtown. There was one area. right on Woodward. Yes, and. Um, I don't know that I had a favorite. I just liked everything chocolatey and sweet and probably those cream puffs that were so famous. Yeah. Mayor, what did you like from Sanders? I like the Werner's ice cream cone. Oh, I forgot about that. So another Detroit institution that's still around, Werner's Ginger Ale. Sanders was making ice cream um, out of that was Werner's flavored, right? right? Wasn't it in a cone or something? Yeah, yeah. It was in the freezer with the vanilla ice cream cones and the chocolate ice cream cones. Yeah. So Kurt, what did you think of now. the flavor of the condensed milk? Oh did you try it? I, I had to try a little bit of it. And and uh, it's uh, it was very good, but I don't think I'd want to <laughs> eat a can of it. No no yeah. it's just super sweet and, and creamy and caramelly, but it is good in certain dishes. And like I said, occasionally in my coffee, I like it. So Kurt, what am I doing with the milk? Just stirring it in? Yes, you are stirring. uh, Let me refer to this recipe again, because I stir the sweetened condensed milk and corn syrup. Oh, Oh, wait, wait. uh, Yes. Okay. So and corn syrup. So let me put the corn syrup in. So watch this. This is what is, this is why I like this measuring cup. 
See yeah. that? Yep. It doubles as a lava lamp. <laughs> <laughs> but where's that? Give me the red spatula, see if we play. Uh huh. And, but there, that way I've got it all. And you don't have this stuff, you know, stuck inside a measuring cup. I'll give that back to you. Okay, so now I've got all the ingredients are in the butter, the milk chocolate chips, the sweetened condensed milk, and the corn syrup. And what am I to do? Then this will take about eight to ten minutes. Uh, reduce the heat to medium low and cook uncovered without yeah. stirring for 30 minutes. Okay. Well, let me just After make sure. All right, but what, what, what takes eight to 10 minutes? Um, stirring the, stirring in the, uh, mixing the corn okay. syrup, milk, and um, chocolate together. All right, so I'll stir this for a couple more minutes. And if your arm gets tired, I'll be glad to help you. And thank you. And then, and then I'm going to reduce the heat to medium low and let it cook uncovered for half an hour. Yes. So we're going to come back after that. By the way, below the video, in the description, will be the recipe um, so to follow. Okay? And I'll ask Sister Girl to make note of the time. And we will give this a few more stirs and then reduce the heat to medium low and let it do its thing for 30 minutes. Okay, Kurt. It's been a half an hour. Right. Where it's just been in the double boiler, untouched, over a low, medium low simmer heat. Now we are to take it out. You remove it from the heat and let it cool for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. So we're going to put it right there. And we will let that cool for 15 to 20 minutes. And then, I believe, we do the blender, right? Yes. Uh, and you'll have to do it in batches. Okay. Um, one cup at a time. One cup at a time. So this is going to end up in the blender. And, Ralph, you know how our food friends love when we put a vintage appliance in the mix. So this yeah. is a... Branded a Sears solid state seven speed blender, but those of us in the know, Kurt, understand that this is a Hamilton Beach um, <laughs> blender made by Hamilton Beach. Very powerful, and I thought I would get out the one of the big guns, and you can see it's in wonderful harvest gold. Yes. So this is around 1970 ish, um, and we'll use that. Or mixing it up. Hamilton I love Beaches. the little place where you can hide the cord. Yes. Hamilton Beach is where all the vintage appliance fans go. On vacation? On vacation, yeah. yeah. I know, I got a bad sunburn once on Hamilton Beach. Do you have a straw I can put in here? <laughs> Actually, it's pretty doggone thick. Look at that. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I'm suspecting it's going to thicken more so, maybe, as it cools off? I suspect, but I'm not sure why they want you to do... Uh, blend it for on high for one minute. Okay. Each cup, but we'll do it. Put some air into it or something. I yes. So we'll be back. Uh, we're going to let this cool 15, 20 Now minutes. we have waited the 15 to 20 minutes for this to cool off the heat. Still, it's, it's hot. Not super hot, but it's hot. So now uh, your recipe says we need to a cup at a time. Put it in the blender, right? Correct. Now I was going to put this in a measuring cup and pour it in, and this number over here says, <laughs> "Well, why would you do that?" Because right on the carafe, it's clearly marked a cup. I'm a college graduate. Uh, this uh, this guy don't let don't let him fool you. He's got it going on. Well, that's why we have Cavalcade Friends. That's right. Thank goodness. We, we get by with a little help from our friends, right? Thanks, Kurt. Thank you, Kurt. I know this um, is going to be on the cutting room floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in these interludes, uh, while we're waiting for things to cook and cool and blah, 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 Ralph was playing some Andy Williams, and I just l was loving on it. Aww. I really, it really, so really sounded good. I forgot album. what a great, great voice he had. Yeah, well, this album is called Lonely Street. That um, it's really different My from his story. His popular, okay. more popular stuff. It's great. Um, but anyways, I digress. So we're gonna put a cup of this 
Do you See? want to try to pour it? Well, no, I think I would make no. even a bigger mess pouring. Um, maybe this is why I thought I would use you, a, a measuring cup. Well, maybe I'm not as smart as you first thought. Well, you had it right, but I'm going to, this will be dripping every which way. So let's do it like this. Maybe um, you need a more of a scoopy spoon, like a soup spoon. Like I was going to put a, a ladle, ladle in. Ladle, but, yeah. Um, well, this is doing the trick. You just this is doing the trick. All right, so here is a cup, more or less. We're going to transfer it to our Sears Hamilton Beach blender. Would you take that wax oh, paper? Chris. Okay. Now again, I don't. There's some reason, right, why this needs to be blended. Yeah. Uh, it's unclear. Well, it's, but we'll we'll see if it. Uh, we will follow the recipe. It. I think it keeps it from congealing or doing um, other things. You know, it keeps it solid. Okay. Uh, at high speed, right? That, that's not on tight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this has eight speeds. So we're going to go eight. Yeah. Here we go. For a minute, you say. That's what the recipe calls for. All right. Now, will it increase in volume? Maybe that's the reason? I would thought maybe it's going to aerate it or something like that. Um, but if you look, it almost looks like it's getting lighter in color. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, I think, yeah. Uh -oh. What do I know? Okay. Has anyone been so, keeping time? I have. We've got about another 25 seconds. So rather than yell and scream over the, the noise of this, I'm going to do this in one cup batches until we're through. I'll put the blended hot fudge in here and we will be back. This section might need subtitles. Well, done and done. Uh, about four cups plus, almost five actually, yeah. of finished product. And here it is. Marianne did some research uh, and found that putting it in the blender for the minute aerates the sauce and incorporates air into it. It's noticeably lighter in color. Yes. So, um, oh, look at this. So we're gonna. It's still warm, of course. Um, now, what did you? How did you? Uh, what did you do with it after you made it? I poured it into the jars um, and put them in the refrigerator. Got it. And then ended up giving three jars away because I didn't want to eat it all myself. Right. I know. All I know about that is I didn't get any. But, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> anyways, so there is... Oh, look at this. Um, so there's four of us. We all get, and I'm making a mess, I know. You can't eat this without making a mess. So, Apparently I don't know. The Saunders ladies never seem to make a mess. Well, they had official Saunders serving dishes. And what expertise. Real? Apparently you can't make it without making a mess either. Not just eat it. But. Right. All right. So, uh, to our friend Kurt. Proof's in the pudding. It proof is in the pudding. Or in this case, the hot fudge. Holy fudge. Wow. <laughs> mm. I think it's... I am... It's 1968. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And I'm at Ives Elementary School spending my lunch money on this. Now, when it hits the ice cream, the coldness of the ice cream thickens it. Mm-hmm. So, Ralph, you went one in on this? No, I'll... I don't know if you can manage... Yeah, it'll be hard. I'll, I'll wait. Well, one of these is for you, and one of these is for Mary Ann. Well, I hope you're not going to film us eating all of it. Um, so, I will say, I'm going to put this down just long enough to say thank you, Kurt, for the recipe, 
Well, thanks and, for having me on the show. Well, um, it was a delight. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ralph, for working the camera. Thank you, sister, for research and information. And thank all of you for hanging out with us as we made this hot fudge sauce a la Saunders Detroit. And this was a lot of fun. And we are going to enjoy this immensely uh, for many desserts to come. And I'll remind our friends, Ralph, that the website is cavalcadeofood.com. And uh, you can see the recipe again in the description below. If you're so inclined, please subscribe, share, and like. And everyone hopefully is having a wonderful summer. I know we are. And we'll look forward to seeing you again real soon right back here on Cavalcade of Food. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Goodbye.